after the different disorders of cortical development, I will show images of Udajaria, which may sound and may look like a malformation of cortical development as well, but is an acquired condition in term neonates. And when explaining the pathogenesis of Udajaria, I will also mention a few things about the folding of the brain and the gar garification of the human brain. In Udajaria, there is widening in the depth of the sulcus, giving it a mushroom appearance with gliosis of the cortex and subcortical white matter. And it occurs mainly in the occipital and parietal regions in term neonates with hypoxia or hypoglycemia. The reason that mainly the depth of the sulcus is involved has to do with the selective vulnerability of this area. When the human brain develops in about the fifth gestational month, the sulci appear and the first gyri, and the human brain has a lot of gyri to enable a more cortical surface to fit within the skull. And there, is, there are a lot of theories about how the folding of the brain takes place. And the different theories are not mutually exclusive. So the uh, most simple one, um, and probably the basic reason, is that um, the skull constrains the further growth of the brain, causing it to fold. Then there are theories that um, during the development, when this is the primitive ventricle, and in red you have the radial glial cells as discussed earlier, the neurons migrate towards the cortex, and then in B, from the cortex, axons form between different brain regions, and these axons exert some tension and they pull different brain regions together, causing the folding of the brain. And this theory was published by Van Essen in Nature 1997 and also explained in the Journal of Neuroscience 2018. And then there is a theory that it has something to do with cells. And when you look across different species, there is a different ratio of radial and radial glial cells that are apical located and basal located. And this causes the brain to grow asymmetrically and to form the gyri. And that was defended in the same issue of the Journal of Neuroscience by uh, Borel. But when the sulci get deeper and deeper, the cortex still has to get blood supply. And the blood supply comes from the meningeal arteries. And they run perpendicular to the surface. So in the depth of the sulcus, the artery has to make an acute angle. So it's more difficult to perfuse the depth of the sulcus. And this is a macroangiography of a post-mortem uh, neonate. So this is kind of a relatively uh, avascular area. And if you look where the... Ulijaria is mainly located in a more general way. It occurs in the same regions as where in, for example, adults with cardiac arrest, the ischemia in the watershed territories is seen. So it is in the watershed areas of the brain. So Ulijaria occurs in the watershed area of the watershed area. And that's why you have the loss of cortex in the depth of the sulcus, mainly in the parietal and occipital regions. And because it are vascular territories, it's not as nicely symmetric as, for example, a pure metabolic disease. But there is a little bit of variance in the vascular territories. So Ulijaria in term neonates with hypoxia or hypoglycemia in the watershed area 
of the watershed area. Thanks for watching and until next time when we will discuss with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy.